back here again with a, another Vinyl Finds video. It's been a couple weeks since I've done one of these, but uh, I am back. I have a decent stack of records to show, so without uh, any further ado, I'm just going to get right into it. Don't waste any more time, but the uh, first couple of albums I'm going to show, picked up at a Half Price Books in various different stops. First I'm going to show uh, that Half Price Books is having a 40% off sale a couple weeks ago, and I picked this one up. It's uh, Pantera. Uh, live Beyond Bootleg, or Far Beyond Bootleg, uh, live from Donington, 1994. Uh, never really, really been able to get into Pantera. There's a couple songs that I really enjoy, but I really need to dive into more of their uh, studio albums and uh, start listening to them a little bit more. Uh, and this one, the recording on this one isn't the best. Uh, it doesn't sound that great, honestly. Uh, I didn't feel like it sounded the best, but uh, I mean, it's a decent album. It was very cheap, so I can't really complain. Uh, honestly, like Pantera, like the song Walk, I absolutely love that song though. And uh, one of the reasons why is back in like, I would say like 1998, 1999, I mean, as a huge wrestling fan, I always watched DCW back in the day. And uh, Rob Van Dam's uh, entrance music back then was uh, the song Walk by Pantera. And it's just like a great song. I actually remember uh, uh, the one of the ECW like soundtrack CDs that was, that was released uh, had that song on there and I listened to that song on like repeat. I, that's probably easily my favorite Pantera song. I love that song uh, thanks to uh, wrestling. So, But uh, moving along, the uh, another album I found a used copy. This is the 2010 reissue of uh, The White Stripes, White Blood Cells. Uh, just not, nothing too special. It was I mean, super cheap so I definitely had to pick that one up. Uh, Pretty much anything Jack White uh, releases as the White Stripes or solo. Jack White is just a just a really really good musician. Um, just a, just, I'm sure if you like Jack White and you like the White Stripes, everyone's probably heard this album. It's just a classic White Stripes album. It originally came out in 2001. Uh, next album I found is the uh, Jerry Garcia uh, Run for the Roses. Uh, Jerry Garcia album that I had been looking for and was happy to come across it finally. Uh, and it was was like six bucks, five bucks, five or six bucks. I think it was like five dollars and some change after tax, but uh, just a really good album. Love the title track, Run for the Roses. Uh, love Valerie, the song that he has on here. There's a couple of really uh, cool covers on this album as well. He has a version of I Saw Her Standing There and uh, Obviously originally done by the Beatles, and uh, he does Knocking on Heaven's Door on here, originally done by Bob Dylan. Uh, I really, I feel like his version of that song is probably one of my favorites. It's a really good uh, album though, by uh, Jerry Garcia. Uh, the next couple albums I'm going to show is uh, albums that I got at the uh, Vinyl Rescue Project in various different times going there. The first one is The Offspring Americana. Uh, this was just reissued uh, like probably about a month ago it came came out and I was definitely glad that it did because an original copy is probably like 50 or 60 bucks so uh, the reissue sounds really good too it's on a 180 gram vinyl and uh, it just sounds fantastic and just a classic Offspring. it's probably one of their biggest albums right up there a smash and it's probably not my favorite Offspring album but uh, there's a lot of really good songs on here of course a pretty fly for a white guy is on, on this album. It's just a, just a really solid album by The Offspring. It's one that I definitely wanted to add to The Offspring collection. And the next album I'm going to show is an original 1995 copy of Bruce Springsteen's The Greatest Hits. I was actually really happy to found, find this one in there. I was just looking at the S's and I was actually looking for uh, Sleep albums at, uh, at the Vinyl Rescue Project to see if they had any like reissues of Sleep. And I was looking at the S's and I just actually came across this one. I didn't find any sleeve, but I did find uh, this Bruce Springsteen, uh, which is definitely uh, very different than what I was looking for, but I was really happy to find it. And then I looked at the price and I was, like, I was wondering why he had it so, for so cheap, because uh, he had like $16 on there, which for, for this album was uh, pretty cheap, considering the fact what it goes for online. And uh, he said one of the reasons why he had it so cheap is that uh, Side 2... And that side disc two uh, had a little bit of a warp, and he said he fixed it and took it out. And he said there was still a little bit of a warp there, so that's why he kind of uh, didn't charge too much for it. 
but I, I've played it, both of them, I've played it a couple of times now, and it sounds, uh, like, I did, there's, like, really, honestly, no noticeable warp on disc two, so he did a really good job taking the warp out, if that's the case, but, uh, just, uh, Bruce Springsteen, one of those guys, that if I really want to listen to Bruce Springsteen, I really want to listen to mainly his hits, so this is the perfect album to have. It's like I probably have a lot of his, a lot of these songs on studio albums, but I just usually never really listen to them, but, uh, definitely, uh, Happy to find uh, this one. Uh, this does have the original sleeves in, in the uh, album as well. But uh, having like po poly inner liner sleeves. But yeah, I really don't need to uh, go up the track listings, obviously. All of Bruce Springsteen's greatest songs up until 1995. I think there might be a couple of uh, newer songs, or at least newer songs for the time. Uh, that's on here, some songs from like 94 and stuff, which is pretty cool to have on vinyl. But, uh, definitely happy to find that one. And then, the, I did pick up this one the other day there too, it's the, uh, Stone Tipo Pilots, uh, Shringala Dee 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 Da, I'm pretty sure I just said that way wrong. But, uh, their, uh, two album that came out was in 2001. Uh, I feel like a very underrated album by Stone Temple Pilots. Um, the first time it's ever been issued on vinyl. Uh, I don't think it ever got an official vinyl release when it came out both in 2001. And this particular copy is on orange vinyl. The first 2000 pressings, I think, uh, were pressed on uh, orange vinyl. And then it is numbered on the back, if you can see it, so right there. I actually have number 99 out of 2000, so pretty low number. Uh, and I really do enjoy the uh, music on vinyl uh, pressings. I have a couple of them now, and uh, they're always just really, really uh, excellent quality. And I feel like the, this uh, Stone Temple Pilots album is very underrated. Uh, I feel like I don't really hear anyone ever talking about uh, St the Stone Temple Pilots album. I feel like they usually talk about Core or Purple, but... Uh, very underrated. I definitely recommend checking it out if you like Stone Temple Pilots. I'm sure you've probably heard it, but uh, definitely happy to have it on vinyl finally for the first time. Definitely had to pick that one up. And then the last album I picked up at the Vinyl Rescue Project. Um, and uh, my friend Derek, he's been in a couple of videos with me. He's probably going to give me some crap when he uh, sees this, but uh, it's uh, No Doubt Return of Sadron. Uh, so, I mean, no doubt's kind of like one of my guilty pleasure musics. I mean, I feel like they're actually pretty good. I really enjoy uh, uh, Gwen Stefani and vocals. Um, and it's like not, it's, album's probably not something I'm going to listen to all the time, but definitely brings back memories. I actually remember when this came out. I remember my brother actually having the uh, CD of this album. <laughs> he used to listen to it quite a bit back in the day. And I remember MTV always showing the... Uh, music video for ex-girlfriend back when they actually played music. It's probably in its dying days. Uh, but uh, definitely uh, just a really ha album that I honestly probably would have never bought if I didn't uh, find it just out in the open. But uh, I mean it was a really good price. Uh, so I it picked it up, an original 2000 copy. So uh, if uh, Derek comes back here I'm definitely going to have to play it for him, that's for sure. Maybe I can get Maybe, maybe I can change his mind about No Doubt. But uh, that's all the albums I have found at Vinyl Rescue Project. Um, did make a trip to Luna Music, which is uh, up north from me. Uh, me and my dad went up there probably about two weeks ago. And I uh, found a couple things there. Uh, I mean, it seems like every time I go in there, there's always something that I, that I want, that I find, that, I, that they have. Uh, first thing I'm going to show is just a little 12-inch uh, single of Cypress Hill, uh, Insane in the Brain. Probably one of the only Cypress Hill songs that I actually really find myself wanting to listen to, but so I figured that getting the single for like two bucks was better than trying to find the album and paying and having, having the whole album that I would probably never play more than one track off of. But there's uh, two songs on here. There's actually four different versions of A Saint in the Brain there's an extended version, an LP version, a radio edit, and then just the instrumental. And then there's uh, one The Ship Goes Down which I think the uh, actual song's when the shit goes down, and so it's got the uh, 
the actual uncensored version and then the censored version, which is when the ship goes down. Then also has the instrumental of that. Uh, so nothing too special there. And then the uh, next album I found, this is one that I was really, really happy to find at uh, Luna Music. And it's uh, the Meat Puppets, Too High to Die. Uh, it's probably, this is an original 1984 copy. It's a promo uh, copy as well. And just a, uh, just a fantastic album. I uh, really enjoy the Meat Puppets. They're just a great band. And uh, this is probably like the album that was the most successful album. Uh, it's got the song Backwater on there, which is actually a song of theirs that actually got radio airplay. And I feel like some of the reasons why this album probably sold as well as it did because uh, this just came out a couple months after the uh, Meat Puppets performed with Nirvana on the MTV Unplugged set when they did like three songs with him, three other songs with them. And uh, the cool thing about this album, there's a bonus track at the end of uh, the second side and it's them redoing Lake of Fire and it's probably one of my, I love that song, it's such a good song. And uh, this also does come with a uh, bonus 10-inch uh, uh, EP that I think only came with like the promo copies and this has uh, four songs on it. It's uh, called Raw Meat. Uh, the albums are just like in near mint shape. It looks like it's honestly never been played. Uh, I do have the original sleeves there in the album, but uh, I have them in these uh, heavy duty sleeves. It's on the uh, London America label. Uh, the next, uh, that's actually it for all the finds I had. The next uh, three albums, I'm, next three or four albums I'm going to show is things I actually got a disc on, on Discogs. Uh, man, I found on, honestly a lot of uh, pretty good deals on there, and I just had to, uh, I just had to go and uh, purchase them. I really don't like buying things online. I'd much rather just find them in the stores. But sometimes you just have to do. Uh, if there's an album that you really want and you find it for a really good price, you just gotta go for it. Sometimes. Uh, and I had a few things on my want list that I got. When things on your want list, when you put things in your want list on Discogs, you get an email when they, uh, when someone puts new stuff up. And man, I found uh, I found a lot of good deals on, on there. I had to jump on them really quick, or else they would have probably not uh, lasted too long. And then the first one I'm going to show is uh, Green River Rehab Doll. This is an album that I've been wanting for a while. And I actually found a copy of this a couple of months back at Luna Music. And uh, they wanted $45 for it, and I actually looked at the uh, album, and uh, I mean, it was just like not in good shape. It, they had, it had so many scratches and stuff on it that it probably would have not, would have not even sounded that great if I wanted to play it. Um, I felt like it was just way too much. They were asking way too much for it. And uh, some, I'm, sh I'm sure someone bought it, but I just... So just put one on my want list on Discogs, and eventually one popped up uh, for this one. I think I paid like thirty bucks for, so it was like fifteen dollars cheaper than what uh, Luna Music wanted. And it's like in near mint condition. It's uh, honestly it looks like it's never been played. Uh, it's got all the inserts. It even has the uh, the original Sub Pop order form, uh, which is pretty cool. And when you actually look at it and you look at some of the prices, it's got kind of Makes you wish you were able to get the uh, same albums for that cheap nowadays. I mean, it's like the first, uh, I think, thousand copies of this album uh, was on green vinyl, which, I mean, on Discogs, it's probably like $100, $100 $150. Uh, back in the day, they were, they were only selling for $8. So, it's definitely uh, not going to find that album for $8 anymore, but this is, a, this is just a regular black wax. Um, which I'm def totally happy with having. It's just, it's just a great album. Uh, if no one's familiar with Green River, and I'm not talking about the CCR album, I'm talking about the band, the one that I'm showing right here. Uh, it's pretty much Pearl Jam and Bud Honey mixed together. Uh, Mark Arm on lead vocals, Stone Gossard, Jeff Abbott's in the band uh, before they joined Mother Love Bone, before they joined uh, Pearl Jam. And uh, this this is their one and only actual album. I think they did have an EP that came out before this album, but uh, I think they broke up even before this actually came out. And Mark Arm was already probably in Mud Honey by the time this was released. But just a really just a really uh, really cool album, and uh, 
one if you've never heard. Definitely recommend uh, looking it up and listening to it. And if you find it, definitely buy it. If you like Pearl Jam, if you like Mud Honey, you definitely like um, Green River. And uh, another thing I picked up on Discogs, uh, it was uh, this Pearl Jam 45 set. It's got two 45s in it uh, with four SOGs on it. Um, love the gateful as well. It kind of looks like they're uh, playing in front of a, a studio of action figures. And I love the, uh, the old school LJN Classy Freddy Blassie figure right there. Definitely makes me like uh, Pearl Jam even more. But uh, just a really cool album. There's four songs on there. It's got History Never Repeats, um, Sonic Reducer, which has which is really cool because it has uh, Joey Ramone on vocals. Then uh, disc two has Swallow My Pride, uh, which is a uh, which is a Green River song and actually has uh, Mark uh, on the vocals. Mark Arm on lead vocals, and uh, My Way is the last song on there. So uh, definitely uh, just a cool uh, couple of singles on there. Here's the actual like 45 albums. It looks like they've never been played. I love the uh, labels. Uh, just two more albums to show. Uh, another one that I had on my want list and it popped up for just a really good price. Uh, comparatively to what it usually goes for, I probably paid less than half of what it usually goes for online. It's uh, Jerry Cottrell, uh, Bogey Depot. And I actually bought this one on uh, from a record store out of Brooklyn, uh, New York. It's uh, called Human Head Records, I believe. And uh, just a that have actually a lot of pretty cool stuff on there and I actually follow them on Facebook and Instagram it seems like they're always getting really cool stuff in their store and if I ever am able to get the, the chance to go to Brooklyn uh, I definitely will check them out this is a uh, two LP set um, one of the reasons why they said they sold it for so cheap is because of the uh, second disc on uh, side one has a uh, a uh, scratch on the first song and it's uh definitely makes a little bit of a uh, noise when it plays it's not very loud it's uh not too bad at all honestly i feel like they gave me a, a really good price on it and uh i was happy to be able to purchase it because uh it's like an album i definitely don't want to pay like a hundred dollars for but one that i definitely wanted it's just i mean it's basically an Allison and Chains album. Uh, a lot of uh, the Allison and Chains members play with Jerry Cottrell on this album. Uh, Lane's not on it, but uh, I mean, this definitely could easily could pass as uh, just an Allison and Chains album. But uh, it's uh, Jerry Cottrell's first solo album, which uh, I mean, I just love Jerry Cottrell's vocals too. I mean, I honestly don't know why Jerry Cottrell does, doesn't do the uh, lead vocals for Alice, Allison and Chains now. I feel like they don't even really need that new guy, a newer guy, but uh, just a great album. I really like the song, uh, Cut You In. One that I had been uh, searching for for a while though, so definitely happy that one popped up on uh, Discogs that wasn't like $100, but definitely one that I will definitely be listening to quite a bit though. And the uh, last album I'm going to show is one that I was super happy to be able to find. And uh, Smashing Pumpkins Machina, an original 2000 uh, copy. Um, this is another one that I got for a really good price. And the reason why, uh, I mean, I paid, I think I think it was $35 for this album. And this is another album that easily goes for probably uh, $100, if not more. And uh, the uh, first album has a little bit of a warp, and he did tell me that when I bought it. And it doesn't affect the play. It's not. Uh, it's very minor. Uh, I mean, it's definitely kind of annoying when you look at it and the album's going like that. But it doesn't. Uh, 
It doesn't affect the, any of the songs. It doesn't skip or anything. And the, uh, sec the second disc is completely fine. It doesn't, there's no warp to that one. He actually said he bought this one new, and this is just how it was when he bought it. Uh, so which is unfortunate that a lot of albums seem to be like that anymore. Um, but this is an original 2000 copy. It does have the 20-page uh, booklet in it, in it as well still. And uh, just really happy to find this one. Just a really, I feel like another really underrated album by the Smashing Pumpkins. This is one of the last albums that they actually released with the original lineup. And uh, I know they're actually reissuing this album uh, in a couple months, I think. And they're actually reissuing it with uh, Machina 2, I, I believe. I could be wrong, but I'll definitely get the reissue when that comes out as well. But uh, super happy to have this one still, an yeah, original copy. But uh, that is all the albums I'm going to show. I'm going to uh, stop talking before this video gets any longer. Uh, I'm sure it's probably already way longer than I want it to be. But uh, thanks again, guys, for watching. Definitely give all those two thumbs up. Uh, and I'll see you again.